Now you can grow ideally a patient in a dish and can experiment on this patient, expand this biomass indefinitely, do your proteomics, do whatever method is developed in the next three years and you can always go back. You are not losing any of this material. Biobanking tumor organoids from patients is a very large enterprise. It takes essentially an army of individuals from consenting patients, collecting specimens, transporting specimens, growing them in the lab, changing them, establishing them, characterizing them. And so what we find is that it actually takes a large amount of kind of support. Are we just going to focus on one disease site? Are we going to focus on patients on clinical trials or every patient that walks in the door? What's the scientific question? What's the clinical question? And making sure that we are kind of assessing and tweaking our biobanking needs accordingly to meet those, those goals. So on the one hand, we have this, uh, the patient itself, so, so getting all the samples in. Um, it, it, it's working out that we, we need more and we need to get these arrangement hospitals in. And sometimes also explaining to patients why do we want them and why is it useful. On the other hand, the uh, reagents are an important part, so the Corn Inc and Stem Cell Tech and some of these companies have developed an enormous amount of reagents by now, which is very important because they help us to standardize it. So it's basically the, uh, the characterization, standardization and resourcing that are under development and, and, and are moving forward, but, but there's still a lot to do there. The lessons I've learned in biobanking is mostly it's hard to make models reproducibly and reliably, and then once you have it going, things change that you don't expect. So COVID could shut down your lab and you have to freeze everything down, um, or you have changes in staff and handling's different. Patient samples come in, they can be very different. And so it's just getting the workflow very standardized to you know, help biobanking and make it reproducible is somewhat challenging. Having the ability to say, we have developed organoids from 400 patients and you know we think that this subset is going to be sensitive to this specific approach you can then go back to those specific six tumors let's say and really focus and personalize their care in a way that you could never do if you didn't have a biobank and so the preservation of, of samples whether it be for you know genomics later or functional modeling later is a critical component to being able to really build out the promise of precision medicine <laughs>